This is about the obsolescence of family in the view of one Gary Lambert, who's the oldest of the three grown Lambert children. It had started as a family joke. Dad always orders the mixed grill in restaurants. Dad only wants to go to restaurants with mixed grill on the menu. To Gary, there was indeed something endlessly delicious, something irresistibly luxurious about a bit of lamb, a bit of pork, a bit of veal, and a lean and tender modern style sausage or two, a classic mixed grill in short. It was such a treat that he began to do his own mixed grills at home. <laughs> Along with pizza and Chinese takeout and one pot pasta meals, mixed grill became a family staple Caroline helped out by bringing home multiple heavy, blood-damp bags of meat and sausage every Saturday. And before long, Gary was doing mixed grill two or even three times a week, braving all but the foulest weather on the deck and loving it. He did partridge breasts, chicken livers, filet mignon, and Mexican-flavored turkey sausage. He did zucchini and red peppers. He did eggplant, yellow peppers, baby lamb chops, Italian sausage. He came up with a wonderful bratwurst, ribeye, bok choy combo. <laughs> he loved it and loved it and loved it, and then all at once he didn't. The clinical term, anhedonia, had introduced itself to him in a nightstand book of Caroline's called Feeling Great by Ashley Trelpus, MD and PhD. He'd read the dictionary entry for anhedonia with a shiver of recognition, a kind of malignant, yes, yes, a psychological condition characterized by inability to experience pleasure in normally pleasurable acts. Anhedonia was more than a warning sign of depression. It was an out-and-out -out symptom, a dry rot spreading from pleasure to pleasure, a fungus spoiling the delight and luxury and joy and leisure which for so many years had fueled Gary's resistance to the poor think of his parents. The previous march in St. Jude, Enid, his mother, had observed that for a bank vice president married to a woman who worked only part-time, pro bono, Gary seemed to do an awful lot of cooking Gary had shut his mother up easily enough. She was married to a man who couldn't boil an egg, and obviously she was jealous. But on Gary's birthday, after he'd flown back from St. Jude and received the expensive surprise of a color photo lab, after he'd mustered the will to exclaim, a dark room, fantastic, I love it, I love it, Caroline handled, handed him a platter of raw prawns and brutal swordfish steaks to grill, and he wondered if his mother had a point. On the deck, in the radiant heat, as he blackened the prawns and seared the swordfish, a weariness overtook him. The aspects of his life not related to grilling now seemed like mere blips of extraneity between the poundingly recurrent moments when he ignited the mesquite and paced the deck, avoiding smoke. Shutting his eyes, he saw twisted boogers of browning meats on a grill of chrome and hellish coals the eternal broiling, broiling of the damned, <laughs> the parching torments of compulsive repetition. On the inner walls of the grill, a deep, deep pile carpet of black greases had accumulated. The ground behind the garage where he dumped the ashes resembled a moonscape or the yard of a cement plant. He was very, very, very sick of mixed grill. <laughs> and the next morning he told Caroline, I'm doing too much cooking. So do less, she said. We'll eat out. <laughs> I want to eat at home, and I want to do less cooking. So order in, she said. <laughs> it's not the same. Gary, you're the one who's bent on having these sit-down dinners. The boys couldn't care less. I care about it. It's important to me. Fine, but Gary, it's not important to me, it's not important to the boys, and we're supposed to cook for you? <laughs> he couldn't entirely blame Caroline. In the years when he'd, she'd worked full time, he'd never complained about frozen or takeout or pre-prepared dinners. To Caroline, it probably seemed that he was changing the rules on her. But to Gary, it seemed that the nature of family life itself was changing, that togetherness and filiality and fraternity weren't valued the way they were, when he was young, and so here he was, still grilling. Through the kitchen windows, he could see Caroline thumb-wrestling Jonah. He could see her taking Aaron's headphones to listen to music, could see her nodding to the beat. 
It sure looked like family life. <laughs> Was there really anything amiss here but the clinical depression of the man peering in? I think I'm going to stop here so we can take some questions. Thank you very much.